My name is John Orfanis. I'm a neurosurgeon here and I practice at West Virginia Ortho Neuro in Charleston, West Virginia. Today we're going to talk about the sacroiliac joint and sacroiliac joint pain. The sacroiliac joint is a bony joint where two bone plates come together. The plates of bone are the sacrum as well as the pelvis. And this is at the base of your spine and it's essentially the transition between your spine and the lower half of your body. The sacroiliac joint is a place where there's lots of muscles, there's lots of ligaments, and there's also a lot of stress that comes from the other parts of your spine. So this area can be affected by trauma, degenerative changes, pregnancy, anything that could cause any damage to the muscles or the ligaments, and then that can lead to chronic pain. Every day I see a lot of patients that have low back pain in my practice, and these patients come in with just typical low back pain or they may have had previous surgery or lumbar fusion or previous operations on their back and they present back to us with back pain or leg pain. A lot of those patients and up to about 30 percent of those patients will have this type of pain and we'll get studies on them and look at MRIs to see if there's any evidence of any pinching of nerves and in a lot of these patients there may not be any pinching of nerves and in those patients SI joint pain is a very common cause of their back pain. So when I see a patient with sacroiliac joint pain the first thing I notice is that they have trouble sitting. When I walk in the room, sometimes I'll see them sitting on one side and they can't get comfortable in the chair. When I start to talk to them a little bit more, they tell me about their pain and they tell me about back pain, which is a very common complaint. And they also talk about sometimes their legs hurting, almost like sciatica. And that pain can radiate down to their feet and it can hurt them when they walk, it hurts them when they sit, it hurts them when they stand, and it will persist and it causes a lot of dysfunction for them and a lot of functional disability on their daily life. When I see a patient that has suspected SI joint pain, what I like to do is start to examine them thoroughly and try to get hands on the patient to see exactly where the pain is coming from. One of the first things I do when I see a patient is I do a test called the Fortin finger test. I'll actually touch on the patient's back and roughly down towards the belt line and I'll just push in on that area. If there's pain in that area, then that is a positive sign that the sacroiliac joint is causing pain. What we also like to do is we like to lay the patient down on the table and we'll do some maneuvers where we move their legs around to try to see if we can elicit the pain. So once we do that and we take a history also and we talk to them about their pain, then we get a pretty good idea if they're having sacroiliac joint pain. Oftentimes these patients have had chronic pain for a long time and they have tried several different modalities for treatment. Those modalities of treatment could involve physical therapy, other types of injections and medications. So when they come to me and then I have an evaluation and I've decided that I think that the SI joint is causing pain, then if they've done all those different modalities, we can consider other things such as injections. Now injections for the SI joint involve using x-ray to find the right spot, which is the SI joint, and we inject that joint with medication such as steroid or numbing medication to see if we get some relief of the symptoms. If a patient gets relief of symptoms, then that is a positive diagnostic test that the SI joint is the pain generator and causing the pain that the patient is having. In my practice, I want to see if the injection is going to be diagnostic and therapeutic. So a lot of times, the patient can get extended relief from the injection of their pain if it works really well. There are some patients, though, that may have only temporary relief of their pain. And in those patients, we feel that sometimes surgical treatment can be beneficial to try to make the pain relief more permanent. When a patient gets temporary relief, from a sacroiliac joint injection and their pain starts to come back, that patient is a candidate for a procedure where we can fuse the SI joint using iFuse. iFuse is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that targets the SI joint to fuse the joint. It's done under anesthesia and we use x-ray to help us get triangulated implants across the SI joint to fuse the joint. The procedure takes a little less than an hour and the patient will then go to recovery and go home that same day. After surgery, I asked the patient to limit weight bearing on the side that we did the operation. Once the patient goes home, we actually give them a walker to help them to get around and increase their mobility for a couple of weeks. At the two-week post-operative visit, we decide if the patient will start some physical therapy and we'll talk about therapy for the patient and get them in with a the therapist to start working on mobility, stretching, and start to ambulate more. In my practice, I see about a 90% improvement in patients after surgery. This coincides with a lot of the literature that supports the use of iFuse for treating patients with sacroiliac joint pain. The goal of surgery is to get you back to a better life, to get you back to doing the things that you were doing before you started to have this debilitating pain, whether it be running, jogging, playing with your kids, or going for a walk when you want to. So the important thing to remember about sacroiliac joint pain is that it's pain that affects both the young and the old. It affects patients that have had trauma, that have had previous surgery, or may not have any other inciting event that is causing their pain. The thing about SI joint pain is that it's overlooked and it's not recognized readily by a lot of physicians. The thing that's great about SI joint pain is that you can get it better with the appropriate workup 
diagnosis, and then treatment. So if after our discussion today, if you feel that sacral iliac dysfunction is a big part of your pain, I'd be happy to see you and see if we can figure it out together and get your life back.